Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and happy Memorial Day. Today we're going to continue the series on Binance by using the Python Binance package in order to retrieve uh, current and historical candlestick data uh, using the Python Binance package. Uh, we're going to start by figuring out how to authenticate using our API key and API secret. And then we'll see if we can retrieve some current candlesticks so that we can use those to initialize our lightweight charts that we created in our last video. And then we'll see about downloading some historical candlestick data that we can use to get maybe data for the past year or so and run that through some technical analysis libraries such as TALib, right? And so we want to uh, try uh, running some of these uh, TA lib, lib indicators um, against this data set and also uh, try to hook up this TA lib to Backtrader and backtest those indicators against our historical data set. So uh, let's get started before we jump too far ahead. Let's just start with the basics. So what I'm going to do is uh, when you Google, you just type by Python Binance, right? Um, that'll bring you to this Python package. And I'm going to go to this read the docs page here. And this is just a, a Python package like any other. It's a wrapper for the uh, Binance API. And it makes it very easy for you to uh, call the Binance API using just basic Python functions and objects. So uh, just like any other package we've covered in the channel, all you have to do is pip install the name of the package. So it's python-binance, uh, pip install Python Binance. And you can see I've installed it already. And then the second thing you need to do is go to your uh, dashboard for Binance. And what you can do is click settings here. And there'll be a sub tab here that says uh, API information or something along those lines. Actually, I'll go ahead and click it and type uh, API management. Um, yeah, and I can delete this key later, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, so uh, what you want to do, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, create one. And it looks like I can just show you, I can just show you it. So uh, Binance. And I just give it a name. I send myself uh, an SMS text. All right, so I got my API key and my API secret after I verified an SMS text message. And I also had to do a verification via my email address in order to uh, make sure uh, the API key was going to me. And so now that I have that API key, what I do is create a file in my directory called config.py. Um, here is a sample config.py just to show you. And all you'd need to do is paste your API key. And we're just going to create a variable called API key and API secret and put our actual keys in there. And so I've already done that. I've placed it in a file called config.py. And then what I'll be able to do is create a new script also called, let's just call it get data. And we're going to just test out the Binance API and make sure we can connect. So let's go back to um, this Python Binance package. And I'm going to scroll down a bit. And so you see we've already installed Python Binance. And so it looks like the first step you need to take is you've got to import the package after it's installed. So you have from binance.client, import client. And then you just make a new instance of client, a client object. And let's see. So it takes an API key and API secret. So what I want to do is import my config. Very simple. And since my config has an API key and API secret, I will just plug that in. So config.api key and config.api secret. And so I should have a client. And so let's test that we can actually successfully authenticate and retrieve some information. So it uh, looks like the first uh, method they give us as an example is this get all tickers. And so let's see what that looks like. Prices equals client dot get all tickers. Okay. And so, yeah, let's just print prices. Let's see if this returns anything. All right. So I will hit play or type Python get data dot pi. And look at that. We have a whole bunch of data and it looks like it's in a list. So I can just do for price in prices, right? And we'll just traverse that list and display them each on a line. So I'll clear that out and let's run it again. And look at that, all kinds of, yeah, all kinds of crypto coins that I've never even heard of. So uh, yeah, we're gonna take something simple here like uh, the Bitcoin US dollar one and we're gonna use that. But just so you know, there's tons of price data in here about look, Ethereum and maybe rubles, uh, all, all kinds of currencies that I've never used here. So 
Uh, that's great. So this package has many different endpoints available. You see there's general endpoints, market data endpoints, account endpoints, a lot of different stuff that's provided. But for this tutorial, what I'm mainly interested in is the market data. Specifically, we want to get some candlestick data, both uh, the current day's candlestick data so we could initialize our lightweight charts, but also some historical data so that we can use it to do back testing and things like that. So it um, looks like there's this historical candlestick function here. And so let's see what that does. So uh, get get K lines here. So let's see that. Let's try this first one for candles. So I'm going to do and get K lines. So candles equals client dot get K lines. And I believe we wanted Bitcoin USDT is what we've been using. And then it uh, looks like this is a they have a variety of constants here. So I could do client dot K line. And you can see I can use any of these constants to uh, get data about whatever interval I'm interested in. So if I want a day by day uh, candlesticks or hourly candlesticks uh, or the up to the minute, uh, I could do that. But let's say I just want uh, 15 minutes, for instance. All right. And for that particular symbol. And let's see. Let's try that. Let's see what we get. So we print the candles there and let's run it. All right, that was pretty fast, so uh, this is a bit hard to read. So let's try to uh, break this down a little bit and see what we have. So the first thing I'll do is print the length of candles just to see how many this returns by default. And then I'm also going to print them uh, line by line. So uh, for candlestick and candles, let's print the candlestick, right? And when I run that, uh, you see we have them line by line, so quite a bit of them. And so I'm going to print the length at the end, and then we'll just look at the format. Let's see in the documentation what this uh, data format is. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to run it one more time. All right, so it looks like it gave us uh, 515 minute candlesticks. And so uh, this isn't a dictionary that has any kind of label. So it looks like they're just it's just a list of lists. So I want to know which one of these numbers correspond to what. Uh, just by glance, this looks like a Unix timestamp. And then some of these are probably open, high, low, and close. So let's go ahead and check the documentation uh, to see uh, what all of these are. So I'm going to go over here. And then um, in the Binance documentation, uh, the official docs here on GitHub, you can see there's this uh, K-line, this uh, candlestick data endpoint. And then the response here, they actually have it documented. And so it's a list of lists. And then, yeah, as we suspected, there is a timestamp. And then it looks like it just goes in order, so open, high, low, close. And then, uh, yeah, we have some information about uh, the volume. So now that we know the structure of the candlesticks, what we'll do is write that information to a file that we can use in Backtrader or another system. So uh, let's remind ourselves, I always forget. Uh, so let's look up Python, the CSV module, right? And let's just see uh, how uh, we write to a CSV file, right? So uh, we just import the CSV package, which is built into the Python, into Python. And uh, let's open a file for writing, right? So we can take this and we just want to open a file and we'll call it uh, 15 minutes.csv and we're writing it to a file. And so we're going to define the file as F, right? And then all we got to do is write a row. So uh, let's write a row. So we want a CSV writer and the ability to write a row, right? So it, it's a CSV writer. So we're going to call this a candlestick writer, right? Uh, candlestick writer, and that's a CSV writer. We give it a reference to our file. So yeah, we'll just call this CSV file just like that. So we're writing to the CSV file. Uh, the delimiter, uh, we'll use a comma. Uh, we don't need any of this quoting stuff because we're not using quotes. These are just numbers. So I think we just need a, a file handle and a writer. And then uh, we just need to specify the delimiter. And then it looks like we just write rows, right? So let's see what write row looks like. It looks like you can just set pass it a list and it'll convert that to a CSV file. So let's do a candlestick writer dot write row and then we'll do a candlestick, right? Yeah. Um, we could spe specify them individually too. We could do like candlestick zero, candlestick one, right? Or we can just pass the entire list. So uh, let's, let's try it this way. Let's just pass the entire uh, candlestick and let's see what we get. So I'm gonna do that, right? And look at that. So we have this 15 minutes.csv appeared, right? 
And so we have a CSV file from uh, Binance there, right? So that looks pretty good. And that gives us the timestamp, open, high, low, and close that we can run through uh, whatever software we want. We can load it to later into a Pandas data frame or use Backtrader or whatever, whatever we want. All right. So let's go ahead and get a much larger data set. So let's say I want all the uh, five minute candlesticks from the past uh, year or so. So let's do that. Uh, so we have this uh, Kalons function, but there's also this historical historical data. So let's go here, historical data. And yeah, we can get a lot of candlesticks. So let's comment out some stuff. So let's go candlesticks equals a client dot get historical K lines. And then we'll also get uh, Bitcoin USDT. And then we can get pass it and interval or we can pass it uh, this date range here. So I'll grab that part um, and I'll just do five minute. I don't think I need one minute. And then let's go from December of 2017. Now let's go even further than that. Let's go uh, January of 2012 to January no, to uh, May 24th, uh, 2020. And let's see how it handles that. That's a lot of data, right? Five minute data uh, for uh, like eight years worth of data. So uh, let's try that again. And then I'll do four candlestick in candles. And let's create a new file. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. And then I'm going to write it to a file called uh, 2012 through 2020.csv and that'll be my candlestick writer and then we can just write we can write this to the file candlestick writer and candlesticks and we'll write the rows and then um, we can also close the file as well so csv file dot close right all right, so let's run that. And that might take a little while to run for candlestick and candlesticks. And let me close those parentheses. All right, I'm gonna run that and let it run for a while. Let's see how quick this happens. All right, so I took a quick break and came back. I think that ran for a minute or two. And then now if I come back, you see I have this 2012 through 2020 CSV file, right? And it looks like there's tons of data in here, like what? almost a few hundred thousand lines here, a few hundred thousand candlesticks. So those are five minute candlesticks. And let's just double check on the range it gave me. So if I go to Unix timestamp, right? And let's display what that looks like. Uh, we have, it uh, looks like it gave me data starting at August 17th, 2017, which is, you know, about, yeah, we've got nearly three years worth of data. Uh, I'm not sure, we asked for from the year 2012, uh, but it looks like it only gave us a few years. So I'm not sure if that's due to uh, there being some maximum number of data points you can request at one time, or if it, it's due to just the symbol we used. Maybe there's not a data going back that far uh, in Binance at least. And so, uh, yeah, I'm not sure the reason that yet for that yet, but you know, we had three years of data, three years of five minute candlestick data, which, you know, if you can't do anything with that, then, you know, what's the point? So yeah, we have a few hundred thousand data points to work with. So uh, that, that should be good enough for what we want to do. So uh, I think it's been, it's been at least 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm hearing the ideal length for a YouTube video is around uh, 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to stop it there. Uh, we showed you how to uh, use the Binance Python package in order to connect to the Binance API. And we were able to download some historical data to a file. And so we have this historic, historical data set uh, in a CSV file of all this five minute candlestick data. So in the next video, let's try to process these uh, candlestick files and try to run them through some TA lib indicators. So the next video, I think I'm gonna focus on using TA lib. So I'm gonna install that and try some of the built-in indicators to see uh, what I think about it. And also maybe uh, explore some other packages uh, as well. There might be some newer Python packages for technical analysis that I'm not aware of. So I'd like to try that as well. So uh, thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next video.